Have you ever noticed when starting a project that it can be completed quickly? Uh, basically quickly, but the finishing details of each of the projects can take sometimes exceptionally long to, to finish. Uh, for instance, <clears throat> when building a house. I hope some of y'all have had that enjoyment of building a house. I have. The structure can go up and be waterproofed and be dried in, as they call it, in about uh, three weeks. But the finishes, you know, the plumbing, the wiring, the sheetrock, the floors, the cabinets, the, the, uh, the doors, etc., uh, that can take another 15 to 20 weeks to get everything in and get it approved and all of that. And so the details always take much longer than the main body to complete. And such was the case in the division of the promised land to the tribes of Israel. Dividing the land for the masses was easy, but assigning the land for the priest and for the cities of refuge was a different story. Now we've already divided the land according to the uh, different uh, uh, tribes, but now it's time to divide the land for the priest and specifically the cities of refuge. So as chapter 20 opens up, it describes the six cities of refuge and the reasons for those cities. Uh, we come to the place of the six cities of refuge here in chapter 20 and verse 1. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, Designate the cities of refuge, of which I spoke to you through Moses, that the manslayer who kills any person unintentionally without premeditation may flee there, and they shall become your refuge from the avenger of blood. Uh, he shall flee to one of these cities and shall stand at the entrance of the gate of the city and state his case in the hearing of the elders of that city, and they shall take him into the city to them and give him a place so that he may dwell among them. Now what is a manslayer? It is a person who is guilty of accidentally killing another person. They killed a person, but they did not do it intentionally. In other words, it was an accident. A manslayer is different from a murderer in the scriptures. A murderer kill, kills with uh, hatred and with intent to kill, but a manslayer does not. It's a totally an accident. For instance, with an accident, uh, one may accidentally hit someone in a coral or a stone or maybe may fall or, or something may happen at random. And we find that over in Numbers chapter 35, verse 22. It is totally an accident. No one meant to do anything. It could also be like, for instance, when the axe head flew off of the handle over in Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 5, and that killed someone. Or it could be like the thief who comes uh, in the night and you kill that person in the night. Now, you can't kill a person during the daylight. That would be murder. But during the nighttime, as over in Exodus 22, 2, if you defended yourself in the night and that person died who came in, then you were considered a manslayer. But when a person becomes a manslayer, his life may be in jeopardy because of the avenger of blood. Now, what is that? Well, the Lord speaks of the avenger of blood of the manslayer here in verse number 5. Now, if the avenger of blood pursues him, then they shall not deliver the manslayer into his hand because he struck his neighbor without premeditation and did not hate him beforehand. He shall dwell in the city until he stands before the congregation for judgment, until the death of the one who is high priest in those days. Then the manslayer shall return to his own city and to his own house, to the city from which he fled. So what is an avenger of blood? When a family member was killed, accidentally or not, in the Israelite culture, the avenger of blood could, could be the only one to come and avenge that blood of the dead one. It had to be the nearest male relative. Uh, he was the one that could avenge and he could shed the blood of the one who killed his relative, uh, of his loved one. And the law of retaliation could not extend past that nearest relative that was alive at the time. That's in Deuteronomy 24, 16, 2 Kings 14, 6, over in 2 Chronicles 25, 4, Jeremiah 31, 29, and 30, Ezekiel 18 and 20. It's well established that the person who is the nearest relative could go and avenge the blood of and justifiably kill the one who killed his relative. 
Therefore, when a murderer killed someone intentionally, the avenger could kill him without fear of punishment. He didn't have to run to a city because he had killed the person who had killed his relative. However, if a manslayer accidentally killed someone, the avenger might kill the manslayer before a trial could be happened and, and prove his innocence. So the Lord sees fit to provide a place for manslayers to run until the trial could prove the innocence or the guilt. Six cities were strategically located across the promised land where the manslayer could run for safety. And with the reason for the cities of refuge stated here, the cities of refuge are named. And we see that beginning on the west side of the Jordan River, the three cities on that side, in verse number 7. So they set apart Kadesh in Galilee in the hill country of Naphtali, Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, and Kiriroth Arba in the hill country of of Judah. Well, this is the Lord who's designated those three cities, and now the Lord designates the cities on the east side of the Jordan River here in verse number 8. Beyond the Jordan east of Jericho, they designated Bezer in the wilderness of the plain of the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth in Gilead from the tribe of Gad, and Golan in Basham from the tribe of Manasseh. Now the Lord states the reason for these six cities of refuge here in verse number 9. These were the appointed cities for all the sons of Israel and for the stranger who sojourns among them, that whoever kills any person unintentionally may flee there and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood until he stands before the congregation. So these six cities were selected by the Lord, not by the leaders of Israel, as I said. Well, that ends chapter 20. We're already headed now to chapter 21. With these six cities of refuge established, the heads of the family of the Levite, uh, Levites remembered that the Lord had directed Moses to establish 48 cities for the Levites in the Promised Land. So the Lord has selected the six cities of refuge, but He had also instructed them to have 48 cities for the Levites. Because remember, the Levites did not receive any inheritance and they had to have some place to live. So in chapter 21, verse 1, we hear this. Then the heads of households of the Levites approach Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the households of the tribes of the sons of Israel. They spoke to them at Shiloh in the land of Canaan, saying, The Lord commanded through Moses to give us cities to live in, with their pasture lands for our cattle. So the sons of Israel gave the Levites from their inheritance these cities with their pasture lands according to the command of the Lord. First of all, the land was divided by the 12 nations, okay, the 12 areas. And the 12 areas were the sons, and they were called by the names of the sons of Jacob, as in Reuben, Simeon, Judah, Levi, and all the way down, all the way, however, Levi did not get a set of tribes, uh, get, a, get a set of land. His was replaced with Ephraim. And also Joseph doesn't get a set, because, uh, a plot of land, because his is re, uh, he gets two portions, one with Ephraim and one with Manasseh. So Manasseh takes Joseph's place. Ephraim takes Levi's place. And so those are the grandsons of Jacob that Jacob actually adopted when he was blessing them there on his deathbed. So these 12 tribes are named after these 10 sons of Jacob and the two grandsons, which are the sons of Joseph. These are the tribal names. Then we come to the tribal divisions. And the divisions, so you'll understand what it was. I've just picked Reuben here. I didn't do the rest. I mean, just fill this board completely full where you couldn't even read it if, it, if we did this. Reuben, uh, the divisions were divided by amongst the the number of sons of Reuben were called divisions. Now Reuben had as sons Hanok, by the way that also is translated Enoch, Palu, uh, Hezron, and Carmi. These are the divisions of the land. So when Reuben gets the land, he gets a, a plot of land that is large enough for four divisions. 
Now within each one of these divisions, there are families and there are households. What are the families? By the way, none of these over here of the, name, the original 12 are alive. None of the tribal divisions are alive at the time. These, are, these were born to these guys over in Egypt and they died in Egypt. It's not until we come over to the, to the families of the tribes. And for instance, I just picked up uh, Palu here. Palu happened to have one son. So he has one family unit. But remember, all these family units of each of these four, there's going to be multiples of these. These family units are going to be the tribal families in the new land. So the four divisions of land given to Reuben are going to be split into the number of fam tribal families underneath these four divisions. We picked out Palu. He has Elab, and Elab has three sons, Namu, Dathan, and uh, Abibram. Now, these are the households. These guys were alive at the time. Now this is kind of a bad example because these two guys actually died, died while they were in the wilderness, but I'm just putting it as an example. This is the, f the family and these are the tribal head, households that, that come after that. And so that's how this whole land is being divided. Well, when we come to the division of uh, the land for these 48 Levitical cities, in the style of the Hebrew writers, as we read through this, I want you to un understand where we're going. Uh, the, the, the writer, and the way, the way they do it in Hebrew, is the writer will make one pass around the complete story and tell you some facts. And then he'll make another pass and tell you some other facts. And then he'll make another pass and tell you some other facts. And if you don't realize that in all the Hebrew writing throughout the entire Old Testament, you'll think things have happened in separate places, but they've not. They're just adding extra information. Well, in the first pass, this writer tells the number of cities designated for each of the Levites. Now, the first go to the Kohath, who are descendants of Aaron. Second, whenever the second will go to the rest of the Kohaths. Now, remember, the Kohaths, uh, the, the descendants of Levi, Levi had sons, uh, he had a son by the name of Kohath, he had a son by the name of Gershon, and he had a son by the name of Merari. Levi had three sons. Levi, down here, Levi has three sons, three divisions. The division that came, that were the descendants of Aaron, became the ability to have the high priest. And yet, all the Kohaths were priests. They and so all those who were not descendants of Aaron had special duties, but not could never be the high priest. The sons of Gershom were were high were priests, but they never could be high priests. The sons of Merari were priests, but they could never be high priests. So we first come to the sons of Aaron who could be the high priest and the allotments because they were the ones who actually could go into the tabernacle and to the holy places and do things there in front of the veil of the. Uh, in front of the Ark of the Covenant with the menorahs and the table of showbread and all of that. So to begin, we look at the number of cities by division, and the writer starts with this line of Aaron of the Kohaths of the line of Aaron in verse 4. Then the lot came out for the families of the Kohaths, and the sons of Aaron the priest, who were of the Levites, received 13 cities by lot from the tribe of Judah and from the tribe of the Semenites, and from the tribe of Benjamin. So we, so Aaron's line is going to get tribal, going to get uh, Levitical cities in the area of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin, and there's going to be 13 of them. Now, to the rest of the Kohaths, who are not of the line of Aaron, uh, these are these other sons. Uh, their families are going to be uh, Zirhar, Hebron, uh, Uziel, and they're going to have their descendants and their families. They'll just use their names. To them, the cities were given in the area of Ephraim, Dan, and West Manasseh. And we find that in verse 5. The rest of the sons of Kohath received ten cities by lot from the families of the tribes of Ephraim and from the tribe of Dan and from the half-tribe of Manasseh. So ten cities go to those who are not who are Kohaths but not descendants of Aaron. Ten cities. Now... For Gershon, remember Gershon was a son of Levi. That was Kohath's brother. 
cities were given. And here we find that in verse 6. The sons of Gershon received 13 cities by lot from the families of the tribe of Issachar, and from the tribe of Asher, and from the tribe of Nephtali, and from the half-tribe of Manasseh in Basham. So 13 cities come to the tribes, to the descendants of Gershon. Now, to the sons of Merari, that's the brother of Kohath and the brother of Gershom. Uh, that's the tribal uh, division that's there. Uh, the land was given into Reuben, Gab, and Zebulun. We find that in verse number 7. So the sons of Merari, according to their families, received 12 cities from the tribe of Reuben and from the tribe of Gad and from the tribe of Zebulun. So 12 cities go out to uh, those of the Merarites. So we now come to this second. That's the first pass around on, the, on telling us about it. So on the second pass uh, through the story, our writer is going to identify the actual names of the city by each division, by name, uh, the names of the city, and the first cities are donated to the, guess what, sons of Aaron, the Kohath, the sons of Aaron. Now the sons of Israel gave by lot to the Levites these cities with their pastures and land, as the Lord had commanded through Moses. They gave these cities, which are here mentioned by name, from the tribes of the sons of Judah and from the tribe of the sons of Simeon, and they were for the sons of Aaron, one of the families of the Kohaths, of the sons of Levi, for the lot was theirs first. If you remember, we've already talked about how these divisions happen. So here we go with the lots in verse number 11. Thus they gave Kiroth Arba, Arbar being the father of Anak, in the hill country of Judah, with its surrounding pasture lands, but the fields of the city and its villages they gave to Caleb, the son of Jehunan, as his possession. So to the sons of Aaron, the priest, they gave Hebron, the city of refuge for the manslayer, with its pasture lands, and Libnah, with its pasture lands, and Jatir, with its pasture lands, and Eshtemoa, with its pasture lands, and Holon, with its pasture lands, and Debir, with its pasture lands, and Ain, with its pasture lands, and Juthath, with its pasture lands, and Beth Shemesh, with its pasture lands, nine cities from these two tribes. And so we have these nine cities here. And as we remember, Kiroth Arba was given to Caleb uh, by Moses, and so it lands there, and it's also a city of refuge that is given to the sons of Israel to live in. Okay, so from Simeon, tribal area is it's, it's taken it's Simeon's tribal area is taken out of the middle of Judah's area and the way we know Simeon's uh, area is by the names of the towns that were inside of it we don't really know the exact border lines but we know the area because of the names of the towns that were given to Simeon so here are these Levitical cities that are given to uh, the Levites, the sons of the Kohath, the sons of Aaron, here in the land of Judah and of, of uh, Simeon. So now here in verse 17, we hear the Levitical cities that are given to the sons of Aaron from the tribal land of Benjamin, just north of Judah. From the tribes of Benjamin, Gibeah, with its pasture lands, Gibeah, with its pasture lands, Anathoth with its pasture lands, and Almon with its pasture lands, four cities. All the cities of the sons of Aaron the priest were thirteen cities with their pasture lands. So here again we've discovered these thirteen cities. And in these cities, these sons of Aaron are responsible in these thirteen these cities for the offerings and for the tithes that are brought, just as if they were serving at the tabernacle over in Shiloh. Uh, the tabernacle has been in Shiloh for about 400, uh, 400 years, and it's way too far for these people to bring their tithes and offerings, so that's the purpose of these Levitical cities. Now, over those years, those high priests may be ordained from this area. They may be ordained to serve as high priests because they can, get, they can do that. And in fact, over the next 400 years, uh, the activities at the tabernacle 
will be limited to those who are nearby the tabernacle and all the rest of the duties happen every place else along these 48 cities. I will tell you this, uh, later on when King David comes in the story, he's going to move that tabernacle finally to Jerusalem and he's going to, when he makes it his capital and Jerusalem is just 20 miles from Hebron uh, and it's in the area of Judah, right? For now, Benj the area of Shiloh where that tabernacle is sitting is actually up in the Ephraim area. And so uh, what happens to us is we go on and the writer comes through now and he tells us and he gives us the names of the cities of the rest of the Kohaths that are not in the line of Aaron. And we find that in verse number 20. Then the cities from the tribe of Ephraim were allotted to the families of the sons of Kohath and the Levites, even to the rest of the sons of Kohath. And he gave them Shechem, the city of refuge for the manslayer with its pasture lands, in the hill country of Ephraim, and Gezer with, with its pasture lands, and Gibzon with its pasture lands, and Beth Horn with its pasture lands, four cities. So Shechem, Gezer, uh, Gibzam, and Beth Horn, four cities, all in the land of Ephraim, and that those are going to be theirs. Following on for from the tribe of Dan. The rest of these Kohaths, who are not descendants of Aaron, are going to see these cities given to them in verse 23. From the tribe of Dan, Eltek with its pasture lands, uh, Gibbethon with its pasture lands, Agilon with its pasture lands, Gath Rimon with its pasture lands, four cities. Well, that happens. Now we go on up into Manasseh. Remember, because half the tribe of Manasseh are also giving to the Kohaths. And we find that in verse 25. And from the half tribe of Manasseh, they allotted Tanakh with its pasture lands and Gath Rimon with its pasture lands, two cities. All the cities with their pasture lands for the families of the rest of the sons of Kohath were ten. So we've got all of them. We've got Aaron's, the Kohath line of Aaron's got their cities. The non-Aaron non line of the Kohath have their cities. And then the writer moves right into the sons of Gershom. And some of their cities is going to come right out where the, from the half tribe of Manasseh where some were just given to the Kohaths. And so here we have it here in verse 27. To the sons of Gershom, one of the families of the Levites from the half-tribe of Manasseh, they gave Golan in Basham, the city of refuge for the manslayer, with its pasture lands, and Beth Asherath with its pasture land, two cities. And so that occurs on the east side of the Jordan River, back where they took it, they gave it to that half-tribe of Manasseh, way up underneath Mount Hermon. Now, uh, on the back on the west side, Gershom is also going to get some land from over there from the tribe of Issachar. That's in verse number 28. From the tribe of Issachar, they gave Kishon with its pasture lands, Dabarath with its pasture lands, Jarmuth with its pasture lands, uh, in Ganon with its pasture lands, four cities. These cities uh, bordered on the south side of the area called the Valley of Jezreel, the Valley of Megiddo. All right. Now the Levitical descendants of Gershon received also cities from the tribes of Asher in verse number 30. From the tribe of Asher, they gave Mishael with his pasture lands, Abdon with his pasture lands, Helkath with its pasture lands, Arehoth with its pasture lands, four cities. Well, after that, Gershon still needs some more. And so they're going to get tribal, they're going to get Levitical cities from the tribe of, of Naphtali, verse number 32. From the tribe of Naphtali, they gave Kadesh in Galilee, the city of refuge for the manslayer, with its pasture lands, and Hamoth Dor with its pasture lands, and Cartan with its pasture lands, three cities. All the city of the Gershonites, according to their families, were 13 cities with their pasture lands. So everything I've been saying about these Gershonites, they, they, from these different areas, they received 13 cities. Now moving on, the writer takes us to the sons of Merari, the last division of the, uh, of the sons of Levi in verse number 34. To the family of the sons of Merari, the rest of the Levites, they gave from the tribe of Zebulun, Joknan with its pasture lands, 
Kartha with its pasture lands, Dimna with its pasture lands, Nahala with its pasture lands, four cities. With going on, Merari receives land over in the, on the east side of the promised land from Reuben. It's from the tribe of Reuben, they gave Bezar with its pasture lands, Jahaz with its pasture lands, Kedmoth with its pasture lands, and Mephoth with its pasture lands, four cities. Now, from the tribe of Gad, here's what happens. From the tribe of Gad, they gave Ramoth and Gilead, the city of refuge for the manslayer, with its pasture lands, and Mahanam with its pasture lands, Heshbon with its pasture lands, Jazer with its pasture lands, four cities. All of these cities of the sons of Merari, according to their families, the rest of the families of the Levites, and the lots was twelve cities. Now we actually found some very interesting things about that. So in, in two sentences, the writer gives a summary of the cities of the divisions in verse 41. All the cities of the Levites in the midst of the possession of the sons of Israel were 48 cities with their pasture lands. These cities each had its surrounding pasture lands. Thus it was all these cities. So then there's a summary of the inheritance of the promised land and it comes like this in verse number 43. So the Lord gave Israel all the land which he had sworn to give to their fathers and they possessed it and lived in it and the Lord gave them rest on every side according to all that the, he had sworn to their fathers and no one of all their enemies stood before them. The Lord gave all their enemies into their hand. Not one of the good promises which the Lord had made to the house of Israel failed. All came to pass. This is very interesting that this has happened. In all these cities that they have received, they're theirs. Not one of them still needs to be taken. The Lord has promised. He has given to them. And if the Lord promises to give something, I want to tell you something. If you do and, and stay within His commands and within His covenant, He will pro and He gives you a promise, He will keep it with you too.